Hi, I'm Ginny Black and I'm Chair of the Minnesota Compost Council and the Compost Council's Research and Education Foundation. Next week is International Compost Awareness Week and countries from around the world participate in that event. This year we're going to talk about backyard composting because we cannot do our usual events because of COVID-19, so we're going digital. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the location of your bin. The mo two most important things for you to consider in locating your bin is that it is close so that you use it and it's close to a water source because you're going to have to water it. You'll notice that my bin does not have a cover and that's intentional. I do have a cover for the bin but I keep it off because I want any rain that falls to fall into the bin. It will be dry anyway and I will have to water it regardless. The misconception about locating your bin is that it has to be located in a sunny spot. I happen to have mine located in a sunny spot because that's the most convenient place to both use it and get water. But it does not add any heat to the process to make the composting process go faster. The way compost heats up is you break chemical bonds when the material is decomposing and you have a pile big enough so that you have enough insulation to hold that heat in. If you don't have a large pile, the heat will just dissipate. So the sun won't really help it and neither will the breakdown of the, of the material because you don't have that insulation that you need. So it isn't important for it to be in the sun or the shade. It really makes no difference whatsoever. The next thing we're gonna talk about is harvesting your compost. So I have a bin but you don't need to have a bin, you can just have a pile. Um, people like to have bins because they're neater. Uh, you, you can see we're kind of in a residential area, so it keeps it neat, it's not messy looking for other neighbors. Um, it, sometimes it makes it easier, it keeps pets out of there, it keeps other vermin potentially out of there. So um, people lots of times like to use a bin. Um, this is my bin, obviously, and I like this bin for a couple of reasons reasons but first and foremost this bin is designed to harvest your use pulling up this door to harvest your compost because the good material the finished material falls to the bottom of the bin and so you're in theory supposed to be able to pull that out with a shovel I think that's kind of hard so this particular bin design has these clips on the side it's in two halves and you pull up this clip and this one, and the two on the other side. And I can take it apart. So, what I do is that. You can see on the bottom here, you can see where the done compost is. Um, and I will set it aside usually do this in the fall so I would have put this back together and then I will take all of this material here and I would turn it back into the bin but because it's springtime and I don't want this in my vegetable garden area um, I'm just going to turn this stuff out on the ground we'll harvest the compost and then I'll put the bin back over here and we'll we'll talk about that so I'm uh, moving this material over here in the garden for a little bit just to kind of store it until a bit later but one thing I wanted to show you was here is, you'll notice that this is dry, really dry, but you'll also notice that the food is, there's no food on top. The food is in the center. And so um, when I manage my bin, I dig a, a hole in these leaves and I dump my food in, and I'll show you that later. But I just wanted you to notice that there really isn't any food sitting on top. It's all underneath the top layer of leaves. And it's also really very moist. So you can see that and this is not too wet. You want this to be wet. You're, um, you have living critters in this compost pile and that's what's breaking down the materials. So you need to, they need food, the leaves and the food, and they need water, just like you and I do. So um, 
just because it's kind of handy right now to see that, um, I thought I'd show that to you and we can talk a little bit more about it later. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, as I said, is harvest the compost. So I've removed all the uncomposted material and put it to the side here. And now here is what we have left. This is about a year's worth of compost. So we're going to scoop it up and put it on this screen. It's a quarter inch screen hardware cloth and um, kind of unchunk it and then shake it to get the fine stuff to fall into the, the stuff we want to fall into the wheelbarrow and the rest of it we're just going to put right here. So we will do that again. And you just repeat this process until you've screened all your compost. Just put a little more on there. So kind of basically what you have left here is twigs that I put in there. I break them up. Um, as I pick them up off the ground when they fall out of the trees for a little aeration gives it a little porosity so that you have air and space for water and air and a piece of bark <laughs> and some clumps of uh, material that aren't quite done yet there's leaves um, stems things like that so that's really what you have left here and you just put it back into your compost bin um, and the next time you harvest, they'll probably be gone. You'll just have a new set of that kind of stuff <laughs> that you'll be screening out. We've gotten all the finished compost out and we screened it. It's ready to be used for uh, plants. And uh, we're gonna put the bin back together. And again, this bin is really super nice because it goes together so simply um, by just running these clips down. it easy to harvest and easy to put back together and just really super easy to use. Now we're going to start our bin again because we emptied it out and I have these bags here they're full of leaves so I have enough carbon to last me all the way through the summer and I'm going to dump this one in the bottom Spread it out. Now we've emptied our bin and we put it back together. And I put some leaves in the bottom and I'm going to water them down a little bit so that they have enough water to decompose by themselves because the rain that falls into the bin will not get all the way down there, so we need to have them moist before we start. And then I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. And water it some more. One more time and then we're going to take the material that's here and we're going to turn it back into the bin. We've restarted our bin with a layer of just leaves and I wetted that down so that uh, we would have enough moisture to break down and now I'm putting the material that's over here that I took out of the bin before back in. Give it a little spray too because it's kind of some of it's kind of dry um, and we want it to be moist so that the critters can live and um, break down the material. That's who we're trying to get to do the work here. And so one of the field tests for whether you have enough water is uh, you grab, in this case I wouldn't recommend food waste because it's kind of mushy and icky, but rather some leaves and squeeze them in your palm. and. If water runs out between your fingers, there's too much water. If 
they don't, then this actually is pretty good. <laughs> um, oftentimes they'll just fall apart. They won't stay together because they're too dry. So that's how you know it's too dry. But in this case, this stuff really does have quite a bit of moisture in it and you're doing pretty well with this. So that's a field test um, to figure out how much moisture you really have in your bin and if you need to add more or not. If it's too wet, then you're gonna need to add more dry leaves to, to, dry, to soak up some of that moisture and dry it out. So we'll continue to fill this stuff back into the bin and uh, then we'll go on to the next part. So we're gonna add food waste to our bin. We've done the prep work. We put the bin back together. We put a layer of leaves on the bottom, wetted that down so that they have enough moisture to break down. Um, and we put the material that was in the bin back in the bin. So here's my kitchen can right here. And you can see I have all kinds of things. There's a coffee, coffee filter with coffee. There's orange rinds, there's lettuce. Um, in other places, we, I have other times, I will have corn on the cob from last summer, banana peels, a, a broccoli stem. And people ask me all the time about eggshells. And eggshells are a mineral. They are not biodegradable because they're like a rock. So what they do is they just break up into little bitty pieces. And it's perfectly okay to put it in your compost, but just know you'll have little white specks in your compost because they won't break down. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll put this stuff back in too, but first of all, we, we, we dig a little hole because you never want to have food waste on the top of your bin. I mentioned this before. It will attract critters, and we don't want critters. So, um, I dig a little hole. I dump my material from my compost bin in there. I'm gonna put this material back in there because it's not fun. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cover it up so that there's no food waste showing on the top of the bin. You also, if you have an open, a more open-sided bin or a pile, you don't want to have any food waste showing on the outside. Again, it the odors will attract critters. So the next step, the final step in this is to rinse out your bin. And I'm gonna walk over to my outside faucet and fill this up with water and put it over the top of this. So I'll be right back. I filled up my container with water uh, and this really does two things. One, you get a chance to clean out your container before you bring this icky thing back in the house. And two, you get to water your bin so that it has enough water. Again, thinking about this as there's living critters in here and they need the food, the food waste and the leaves and water and air. So I have now got a clean bin. I can bring that into the house without too much trouble at all. And I've completed my composting process. Now, because I've turned in the old stuff, this is kind of mixed here. I'm gonna put a few leaves on the top just to add a little biofilter. Those leaves, those dry leaves, will be a biofilter so that if there is any odor, it will be absorbed by the microorganisms on those leaves. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm done with the composting process. That's how you manage your bin. Pretty simple, dig a little hole, put your material in, go cover it up, go over to the spigot outside, fill in your container with water, rinse it out a little bit, pour it over your compost material, and you're done. So it's pretty easy. I do that once a week, and generally speaking, uh, as you could see earlier, I had about 10 to 12 inches of compost, finished compost on the bottom, and that's in one year. So, next we'll show you how to use your compost. We're gonna talk about using that compost that you created. 
generally speaking, I use it for potting plants. So I'm going to show you that. Um, and if you go online, it will tell you about 20% compost to 80% uh, soil. I generally use more than that, a higher mix of compost, simply because I want to take advantage of the water holding capacity of compost. And so I don't have to water the plants on my deck nearly as much. Um, and instead of twice a day, which, which if you use the 20 to 80 uh, recipe, you'd water twice a day. With about a 50-50 mix, it's uh, once a day. And I prefer a little less work. So, so what I do is I will mix this equal parts compost and soil. So here's my soil. It's from my vegetable garden, which I've been adding leaves to for the last 30 years. So it's really pretty high in organic content to begin with. And I'm not going to need a whole lot of, this is a small pot, so I won't need a whole lot. And there's my two scoops of compost. And I'll mix that up real good so it's nice and even and then I'm gonna take I'm I'm putting uh, planting some parsley I like to have uh, basil and parsley and cilantro in the house for cooking so this is my uh, curly leaf parsley that I'm gonna plant in this pot and I'm gonna put a little bit in the bottom and then put this here you use your compost. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the backyard process versus the commercial compost process and how that relates to the feedstocks that you can send to each type of, of process. In a backyard process it's a cold process and in general it doesn't get more than about 20 degrees higher than the actual air temperature. So if your air temperature is 90 degrees, it's only going to be at most 110. In order to kill the bacteria that would come with meat, dairy, pet waste, and the weed seeds uh, that if your uh, weed has gone to seed, you have to reach a minimum temperature of 130 to sterilize and to sterilize the weed seeds and kill the bacteria that comes with those materials. So as a result, those materials cannot go or should not go in a backyard process, but if you have a curbside collection program, they can. An additional material that I should mention is uh, compostable plastics. There are a lot of products out there now that are of compostable plastic material. This is a corn-based product for the most part. There are some other types of uh, sugar cane and some other types of uh, organic pro um, sources for those materials. Those materials, however, are not made for a backyard process. Again, it is the temperature that you have to reach a higher temperature in order for those materials to decompose. So, so they're suitable for a commercial process, but not for a backyard process. By and large, there are no compostable plastics that are suitable for the backyard. So at this point in time, the state of the technology is that you can't use it in your backyard bin. I hope you found the information today useful. To recap, we've covered where to locate your bin, how to harvest the compost out of your bin, how to restart or start a new bin, and how to use your compost. You should be able to become an expert composter now having this information. We also covered and touched a bit on the difference between backyard composting and commercial composting and why you can put different things, different materials from your kitchen into those different compost methods. 
So, happy composting. <laughs>